What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Pandas Finance and Sentiment Analysis tutorial video. In the last video what we did was we created this calc position function. We mapped that through um, Pandas basically to our column of DF position to generate uh, the position we wanted ourselves to be in at the time. And now in this video we're going to talk about what, we can, what we're going to do from there. And before we get into it I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and run through what each of these positions looks like on a chart basically so um, so I have the images here so this would be a purchase one scenario so at this point uh, we would want to purchase one because it's obviously trending up a little bit but we're still below the uh, 5,000 moving average line these are just arbitrary choices that I've made so we haven't done any computerization of like why this was a good strategy if for any reason it's just numbers I just kind of made up so we're saying this is a buy one stock scenario. We want to hold to have one stock. At this point, when it crosses over, um, the f when the smallest moving average crosses over the 5,000 moving average here, or the largest moving average. So we've got in this, like in this scenario, we've got MA4 greater than MA1 greater than MA2 greater than MA3. In this scenario, we've got MA1 greater than MA4 greater than MA2 greater than MA3. In this scenario, we want to buy two stocks. Like we'd want to have our position twice uh, or, or with two stocks. Moving on, this would be a scenario. Sorry, it's kind of small. I can zoom in, but it blurs this up. But this would be a scenario where we'd want to buy three. Now, not at this point, but at, at this point in the circle, right? At the point here, this would actually buy four, and we'll show that in a second. Um, so this would be a scenario where we want to buy three stocks. And then here is a scenario where we would buy four. And this is where the smallest moving average is above the second to the smallest, above the third, and then above the fourth. Okay. Now that's buy four. Now this would be a scenario where we would sell four, where that's basically flipped, right? So the smallest moving average is all the way down, followed by the second, followed by the third, followed by the fourth. So this would be a sell four stocks position. This would be a sell three position where the 500 is still coming down, so or the you know the third smallest moving average is still coming down, it hasn't crossed over the fourth just yet, but it's looking pretty bearish at the moment. This would be a sell two position, basically at this point here, where uh, we've crossed over and we're coming down, but we just haven't crossed over the largest moving average yet. But once we do, we're going to start getting scared, right? So this is a sell two position. And then sell one position. Everything's above the 5,000 or the you know the largest moving average, but we're decreasing and it's probably you know going to tr continue trending down. So this is a sell one position, okay? Because we're still you know higher than the long-term moving average, but we're looking not so positive. So again, these are just kind of arbitrary choices. Later on down the road, we could pick um, either add more variations because this obviously is not all of the variations that we could come across so we can either add more variations we can also pay attention to what the stock price at the time and we also pay attention to what the actual uh, sentiment valuation is are we above zero are we below zero and so on so anyway that's what all of these mean okay now the next thing that we want to do is we have our position at the time but what if we're you know we can't just say each time it says negative one um, in our output, let's see if I close that output or not. Yeah, I did. Uh, but it says, you know, let's say under position it says negative one. Well, each time it says negative one, we can't just keep selling stocks. And if it says one, 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 we can't just keep buying stocks. That's not where our intention, intention is. Instead, what we mean to say is we'd like to be in a position where we're just minus one stock. So how can we do that? Well, um, the way we can use, or do this is we have this DF position column. Now we can have a DF change column and change is going to be what was the change between the previous that the current value and the previous value and if there is a change that's the amount of stock that we need to ch uh, trade right now so df change is going to equal df position oops pious position dot diff okay so we're going to use this difference um, command to do that so let's go ahead and save and run that and I think it takes like probably 20 seconds or something like that to show up for us. And we're not plotting or anything, so um, we don't have to worry about that. But then what we can do with change is when we see that change, we can reference what's the current price at the moment, what's the time, all of that. And then we can actually, execute, you know, in theory, execute a trade. Now, um, obviously here we've got negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, all the way down and no change. Okay, so... Um, 
we're not really seeing if our change is really working. I'll try to, well, not to 200. Uh, let's try 100 to 200. Maybe we'll see a change in there. If not, you'll just have to take my word for it. We'll eventually see a change, uh, but we just might not see one now. And then after this, this is basically the last thing we're doing in this video. And then in the next video, we'll carry on with um, actually, you know, creating a back tester on this strategy. So let's see here. So there is just no change because we have no no position in any of these. So change is not a number as well. So <laughs> anyway, sorry you can't see a, a evidence of a change, but I assure you it will be there. Um, so that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we're going to be doing, um, you know, taking this further and actually starting to create the strategy where there's actually back testing of a trade occurring here so anyways if you guys have any questions or comments up to this point feel free to leave those in the section below as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and the subscriptions and until next time